Okay, so welcome to this next video in uh, the playlist on cancer. In this video, we're going to dis uh, continue our discussion of uh, the cell cycle, and specifically, we're going to now look at the uh, G2M transition. Okay, so the way I'm going to um, structure this video is we're going to have a uh, brief reminder of the sort of larger picture of the cell cycle. Then we're going to remind ourselves of the um, the G1 phase, the S phase briefly, and then we'll talk about what's going to happen in this G2M transition, which is the transition from the second growth phase to the mitosis phase. Okay, so let's start off with a uh, brief reminder of the big picture of the cell cycle. So this is what we have. We have a cell here and the cell cycle is the process by which this cell can go from being in a quiescent sort of period of its life where it's doing very little to um, dividing into two, okay? Like so. Right, so uh, a big portion of the cell cycle consists of this what's known as interphase. Now interphase can, con can uh, continue indefinitely basically because interphase is this uh, portion of the cell cycle where this cell is not dividing. So the start of interphase is when this cell has just been formed from a parent cell. So let's say here is its father cell uh, which um, gives rise to both of these two um, daughter cells. Okay, so this cell is going to split into two, and then as soon as this cell has been formed from the division of this previous cell, this mother or father cell, whatever you want to call it, um, this um, cell then goes into the interphase, which is a period where it's living its life, it's doing whatever it does, and it's not actually getting ready to divide into two itself. Okay, so that can continue indefinitely, basically. So it's not set how long the cell will remain in that interphase. Okay, now, at some point, it makes the monumental decision to actually begin this process by which it itself is going to start uh, dividing into two. Now, uh, lots of things can trigger it to move into this next phase of the cell cycle where it's getting ready to begin the process of division. And uh, there we've looked at them in this playlist. We've looked at the different uh, pathways by which you can uh, cause a cell to move from the interphase to the G1 phase. So we've seen, uh, for example, uh, the Wnt beta catenin pathway, where, uh, which resulted in uh, beta catenin going up within the cytoplasm of the cell, and then beta catenin acts as a transcriptional coactivator. It binds to uh, T cell factors and uh, lymphoid enhancer factors, and then um, and then m modifies their um, transcriptional activation profile, i.e., which genes they are going to uh, increase the expression of, and basically it causes them to start increasing the expression of um, proteins that are going to be associated with moving from interphase to G1 phase. Okay, so this first phase of the cells of the active cell cycle is what is known as G1 phase, uh, which stands for the first growth phase. So this is equal to the first growth phase. Oh, and I should, was in the process of discussing uh, growth phase, oh dear, sorry, that's growth phase, okay? Um, I was in the process of discussing other things which could uh, move you from interphase to G1 phase. So the Wnt beta catenin pathway is an example. There's also the growth factor receptor pathways, and we've seen two examples of uh, the growth factor receptor pathways. We've seen the growth, how the growth factor receptor pathway can lead to the activation of the uh, MAP kinase or ERK pathway. MAP kinase and ERK, remember, were two different names for the same protein. Uh, MAP kinase stood for mitogen activated protein kinase uh, and ERK stood for extracellular signal regulated kinase but they were the same thing um, so we saw that how that pathway could lead to the activation of transcription factors such as CMYK and um, the CFOS CGN uh, dimers um, we also saw how the same uh, growth factor receptor could also activate another pathway, namely the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway, which could also lead to um, this uh, movement from interphase to G1 phase.
Okay, so let me colour in this. So the first growth phase will colour in red here. Okay, let me just get that. Okay, um, so uh, we also saw in my video on uh, the G1S transition, we saw an example of what is actually happening in the G1 phase. Um, so basically the cell uh, is preparing to replicate the DNA. And um, let's just quickly go over this. So uh, on every single chromosome in the cell, so let's say this represents a one huge great chromosome. Uh, so chromosomes are linear pieces of DNA, they're not circular like in bacteria. They are great long strands of DNA. Now, um, along the chromosome, at intervals along the chromosome, what you have is sites known as origins of replication. Okay, and if you think about this, if we want to replicate the DNA, we could just start the DNA polymerase off at one end, and basically it could work its way down and it could synthesize complementary strands to both of the two strands of the DNA. So basically what it could do is it could work its way down and synthesize these complementary strands to each of the two strands of DNA. So it breaks the DNA apart, it breaks the hydrogen bonds apart, and then it will synthesize complementary strands to each of the two strands. So what you'll end up with is this doubling of the DNA. Okay, that's one way you could do it. The problem is that the DNA polymerase will take a very, very long time to make its way along this entire chromosome. So this process will take absolutely ages if you just let set one DNA polymerase off at one end and it works its way all the way down to the other end and copies the DNA like so. Okay, that's not the way it is done. Instead, at intervals along the, um, along the chromosome, you have what are known as origins of replication, okay? And basically what happens is that DNA polymerases all set off from different origins of replication. So you get a DNA polymerase starting here, a DNA polymerase starting here, a DNA polymerase starting here. So at all the different origins of replication, you set off DNA polymerases, basically. And what these DNA polymerases do is the one that sets off from here will tr uh, copy the DNA from this origin of replication to the next one, okay? And then it will stop. So it will just copy this bit of DNA. So its activity is going to be to make, the, th make this happen, basically. It's going to split these two strands up, and then it's going to synthesize the complementary strand to... Let me color code this to make it easier. So this is a green strand. This is the green strand here. This is our green strand here. Okay, and in pink, let's have the co original complementary strand here. That's going to be here in this picture, and it's going to be here in this picture. So these two new strands you've got here have been synthesized by the DNA polymerase enzyme. Okay, uh, so basically what happens is you set off DNA polymerases from all the different origins of replication, and the DNA polymerase that starts off here will synthesize the complementary strands for this first segment of the chromosome, and then the DNA polymerase that sets off from here will then synthesize the complementary strands for the next segment, so it will synthesize these bits and it will continue on like that. So you'll have loads of different DNA polymerases working at loads of different points along the chromosome, all uh, synthesizing the complementary strands, um, basically, and copying the DNA. That is a much more efficient process because now you can have all of them working at once, so you'll get the job done much quicker. Uh, so um, basically, that's the concept of an origin of replication from which uh, these DNA polymerases are going to start working. Okay, right. Now, DNA polymerases cannot just come and bind to these origins of replication. Instead, you need a whole bunch of proteins to first bind to these origins of replication to get DNA polymerase to actually mount on that, um, on that um, collection of proteins. And uh, that you're starting to make uh, this collection of proteins in uh, the G1 phase. So in the G1 phase, at each origin of replication, so let's now bump this picture up and say that this entire thing is an origin of replication. Okay, so let me emphasize this by saying this was an origin of replication on this picture, now we've bumped it up, so this is an origin of replication, so we've just magnified in, basically. 
okay? Uh, and what happens in G1 phase is you assemble on all of the origin of replication, uh, or on all of the origins of replication, on every single chromosome in the cell, you assemble what are known as pre-replication complexes, okay? Uh, or PRC, pre-RCs for short, so pre-RCs, these are abbreviated to. Okay, and a pre-replication complex consists of uh, many proteins, so one of the key proteins is an origin recognition complex known as ORC, so this is the origin recognition complex, or ORC. Then you also have uh, four proteins associated like this, but they're not four distinct proteins. Instead, two of them are what are known as SDA, uh, sorry, CDC6. So these orange ones are CDC6. Okay, so let me label this up. This is CDC6 here. Okay. And these other two off-diagonal um, proteins, they are CDT1. So in pink, we have CDT1. Okay, so this is CDT1. Right, and then the origin uh, recognition complex, or this ORC, uh, was in the middle, and I'll colour that in green. Okay, so there's the origin recognition complex right in the centre. That's not quite the full pre-replication complex. You also have two other proteins, which I'll draw here. And these two proteins are what are known as MCM helicase enzymes. And they are a DNA helicase, which means that they um, split the hydrogen bonds between uh, the uh, complementary organic bases of the DNA double strand. Okay, ooh, that's gone horribly wrong. That's a horrible yellow, isn't it? The, well, I've coloured it in. It's meant to be yellow, but it's been um, discoloured by um, drawing it on black pen. Okay, um, so this is the... MCM helicase enzyme. Okay, uh, right. So this now is the pre-replication complex. So all of these proteins, the uh, two CDC6 proteins, the origin recognition complex, the CDT1 proteins, and the MCM helicase enzymes are all mounting on origin of recognition uh, of replications, and um, this is happening in the G1 phase, and it's happening on every origin of replication along every single chromosome in the cell. So, you are starting to get ready uh, to divide by making these uh, pre-replication complexes, and that's something that's happening in G1. Then, what happens next is you've got ready to divide, basically. So now, what has to happen is you actually have to replicate the DNA, basically. So you have to replicate the DNA. And this is the S phase of the cell cycle, where uh, the replication of the DNA actually begins. And S stands for synthesis. So this is the uh, phase of the cell cycle in which you synthesize um, another whole strand of DNA, basically. Well, another, um, you copy the entire genome, basically. Okay, um, so uh, let's cover the S phase in pink. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.